Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. Now, if you've been watching my YouTube videos for a while, you might have noticed that in some of my landscape paintings that I've been adding animals into them, mainly in the distance, but I think that they add life to a painting. So painting animals is something that I want to explore further. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a little painting that I did it's a simple landscape that features some cows in a field and I'll give you some tips on painting animals and also creating atmospheric depth in your painting as well as colour harmony as well. Now this is just a small painting but I do lots of these small studies as they're a great way of practicing your subject and also they make great colour studies if you want to do larger paintings. They also make awesome little paintings that you can frame and put on your wall. So all round good stuff. If you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. In the meantime sit back, relax, get your paintbrushes ready and let's roll the tape. I'm painting on an 8x10 linen panel and what this is is Belgium linen that's been glued to Baltic birch. Absolutely ideal for small paintings and plein air paintings. The linen is oil primed and I just love the way the paint adheres to the surface and the way it handles as well. In fact, if anything, in the last year I've been painting on a lot of linen panels and I just find them really nice to paint on. These panels are made by a company called Source Tech and they're available from canvaspanels.com. Now what I'm doing here is I'm sketching out the composition. As I'm using oil paint, I'm using Liquin Original as my medium. So what this does is it thins the paint and you've got the added advantage that it speeds up the drying time because it's an alkyd resin. So I mix this with some burnt sienna and I'm sketching out the composition here. I started with the background mountains and then worked forward and then I marked in the rough position of the cows. I'm using oil paints and the colours I'm using include titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow oxide but you could also use yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, quinacridone crimson but you could also use alizarin crimson instead, ultramarine blue and thalo green. So I'm using a fairly limited palette here. Now once I've got my composition marked out as with all of my paintings, and you will have heard me say this in many of my videos, is the first thing I think about is where are the dark values in the scene that I'm painting. Value refers to how light or dark a subject is, and I've found it's much easier to start painting your dark values and shadows first. This was something I learned through painting outdoors on plein air because the light is always changing and the shadows move. And I found that once I painted in those shadows first, that it didn't really matter so much that the light was moving and it made it much easier to gauge the whole tonality of the scene, create an atmospheric perspective and also get the saturation of my colors correct depending on where they are in the landscape. So what I've done here is I've started off with the background mountains and the shadows, they're quite a vivid blue. They've got a blue cast to them, but also a bit desaturated as well. So what I did here was I started off with some ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna, titanium white, and I've also used some quinacridone crimson. These mountain shadows have a blue cast to them, and this is something I've noticed in the landscape, particularly in New Zealand. The value of the mountain is a mid-tone, so not too dark and not too light. And I was able to use that same mix to start painting some of the frost that's in the foreground. As I work forward in the painting, I start painting the tree shadows and I'm using the same colors, but with less titanium white. So that's gonna make that color darker. So our shadows are gonna be darker the more we come into the foreground and we'll find our darkest darks and our lightest lights in the foreground. Whereas in the background, darks are not as dark and lights are not as light. And that's because the value scale narrows. I'm applying the paint here with a number five flat brush. And I like using these large flat brushes because I can achieve a more painterly, more gestural effect with the marks, but also it means I can cover ground quickly as well. So our darkest darks in the painting are in these cowls in the foreground. 
and I'm going to be using a near black in many cases but I never use pre-mixed black I always make my own and you can do this by mixing ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and the reason being is burnt sienna is actually a dark orange and orange is opposite to blue on the color wheel so when they're combined we can create a really dark value. So I'm marking the main areas of the cow's fur and I also mix in a small amount of titanium white and some more ultramarine blue into the mix just to paint some of that reflected light on the cow's fur. I'm not worried about detail at this stage at all but I want to make sure that those cows fit in with the looseness of the rest of the landscape. I'm going to be keeping this painting a bit more loose and gestural overall. Once I've marked in the shadows, I start with the furthest zone away in the painting and that's the sky. And this is a mix of ultramarine blue with titanium white and I mix in just a small amount of phthalo green in there as well. So that's just gonna shift that blue to a more greenish blue. Now in this video, I'm gonna mainly focus on painting the cows here. But what I've done at the moment is I've just worked from the background forward. So started painting in the areas of the mountain that are in light and then the hill in the midground. And the thing that I need to keep in mind is that I don't want the colors too saturated. Our value scale is narrower as well. So our darks are not as dark and our lights are not as light, but also the saturation of that color is not gonna be particularly intense either. So we need to keep this in mind. Now we can desaturate our colors by using colors that are lower in chroma, such as a yellow oxide or a yellow ochre, particularly when mixing the greens. But also we can add color opposites to the green, i.e. colors that contain red, and that's gonna desaturate the color as well. And then we can also use titanium white to make the value lighter. And again, this is also gonna have a desaturating effect on our colors. So as I paint that mid-ground grass, this is just a mix of ultramarine blue with a little bit of yellow oxide, a lot of titanium white, and I've also mixed in, in places, a small amount of phthalo green and quinacridone crimson. And the quinacridone crimson is just gonna help balance out that green. Another thing to keep in mind is that sky and grass are some of the lightest values you'll find in the landscape whereas the darkest values tend to be the uprights or the trees. As I work forward in the painting, I continue to use the grass that I used for the midground, the color mix there, but I increase the saturation by mixing in some cadmium yellow and a little bit of cadmium orange. I could also mix in some phthalo green as well. And then what I was doing was I was painting around the cows, so filling in the negative spaces around them. Also this number five flat brush is ideal for painting grass and just covering ground quickly. And I just love using flat brushes all together. They're probably my most used brushes for oil painting as I like the marks that you get with them. Now the brushes I'm using are made by a company called Rosemary & Co that are based in the UK. And what I do is I just get them shipped over to me here in New Zealand, but they're really great brushes to use and they're super high quality, but very reasonably priced as well. I've put a link to their website in the description box below. I continue to work on the mid ground of the painting, marking in some of those trees there. And then I start working on the cows themselves. So what I've done is I've taken the cows here and I've sort of divided them up into zones. I've got the areas of the cows fur that's black, the areas that are white, and then I've also got to divide it up into the areas of the fur that's in the full sunlight and the areas that are in shadow. So for those shadow areas of the white fur, I've mixed ultramarine blue with some titanium white. And there's also a little bit of burnt sienna in there to desaturate. Again, I can even mix in some quinacridone crimson just to give the mix a violet tint. Now, colour harmony is one of the keys to creating a successful painting, as well as getting the values correct. I actually think values are the most important, but colour harmony is important as well, because this is what's going to make your painting read well. You should be able to just look at it and think, yeah, the colours just really work. You might not even know why, 
But the way we can create colour harmony in the painting is to try and use similar colours throughout, so there's something in common throughout the various zones within the painting. So you'll see here in the cow's fur so far, I've used colours, well, pretty much ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, titanium white, and maybe some quinacridone crimson. I already used those colours in the shadows of the mountains and the trees. In fact, I've pretty much been using ultramarine blue throughout the whole painting, especially in the grass and the trees. So this is what's gonna to help to tie in all these zones together. I'm still in the blocking in stage at the moment, but I just wanna mark in the main areas and just get paint on the canvas so that I've got a good base for me to work on. I'll mark in the shadows of the cows here, and this is a mix of ultramarine blue with some yellow oxide. And these shadows are going to be really important because it's going to create that three-dimensional effect in the painting. And a sense of strong morning sunlight on a frosty winter's day. Now as it happened, I had to adjust these shadows later on, but for now, I just want to get down this main information. Next, I paint the snow on the mountains, and this is a mix of titanium white with some burnt sienna. And there's also a tiny amount of ultramarine blue in there as well. But what the burnt sienna is going to do is it's going to give the snow an orange glow to it, but it's also going to make the value a bit darker so that the snow sits back in the landscape and doesn't completely leap forward. And I'm able to use the same colour mix for the areas of the cow's faces and body where the white fur is that's in the full sunlight. Now, as I said before, I want that value a little bit darker so that when I work in the highlights, it's really gonna help to create a three-dimensional effect in these animals. I'm also using a smaller brush here, a number three flat brush. Now, just a note on painting animals. I'm not that experienced at painting them and it's something that I want to get into a lot more. And one of the things I've been doing is sketching them. So particularly things like cows and horses. So just even doing, you know, 20, 30 minutes each day whenever I've got time, just to get familiar with the form of the animals. So I've been doing this quite a bit. And what I've done here with these cows is I've generally kind of measured the rest of the cow's body with the size of the head. Also, I've identified the major planes within the cows as well. Now at this point I'm not overly worried about accuracy because later on in the painting there's going to be plenty of time to add detail and make adjustments to the shape and form of the cows and I can do this by working on the animals themselves or filling in the negative spaces around them. Both these are good ways of adjusting the proportions. I'm already using smaller brushes here to paint things like the noses and eyes in these cows and it's here that I'm using a number zero round brush. Overall, I still wanna keep the brush marks relatively loose and gestural, but I will be adding more details to this later on in the painting. Now, I tried to get in as much details as I could during the block-in stage, just so that I didn't have as much to do once the painting was dry. Really, most of the detail is going to be within the cows because that's the main focal area of the painting. But I made some value readjustments and restated the darks and just tidied a few areas up. And it was here that I left it to dry for a couple of days. Even though I'm using the Liquin Original, which allows the oil paint to dry quickly, often the paints dry within 24 hours, I usually leave my painting for two or three days before I come back to it. Now, once the painting was dry, I started off with the furthest zone away again, which was the sky, and then I worked forward, adding more details to the mountains and the midground as well, restating some of those shadows in there, and just starting to add some more details. I don't go too mad with the details in the distance because I don't want to overcomplicate the composition and I don't want the eye to be drawn completely to the background. Really, I want the focus to be on the cows. Another reason for adding some more layers of paint, particularly to the sky in the background, is to make sure that the canvas is completely covered and the white of the surface isn't showing through. Now, if you've watched any of my older videos, you'll see that I used to tone the surface with a layer of burnt sienna, which gives it a nice warm glow to it. And it's not to say that I won't do it again, but I 
Recently went back to just painting on a white surface and I've actually found quite a difference. One of the things I noticed when I was painting on a toned surface, like with Burnt Sienna, was that I was getting lost in my darks a little bit in that my darks were coming out too dark and then I was having to make a value readjustment later on in the painting, which was pretty frustrating. The thing I've noticed with painting on a white surface is that I can actually use the white of the canvas, with it being the lightest value, to gauge the rest of the values and tonality of the painting. I've also noticed that my colours look cleaner as well. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't use a toned surface at all, it's really a matter of preference and both have an advantage. But for now I'm really enjoying painting on these linen panels the way they are straight out the packet with the white surface. They even smell nice as well. So again, I work my way forward in the painting, adding more to the grass in the foreground, and I start painting around the negative spaces around the legs of some of these cows. And then I'm straight on to painting the highlights in the cows' faces. The brushes are smaller and I'm using a number zero round brush with a mix of titanium white and a small amount of burnt sienna. And I'm adding much finer details here. Of course though, I want to keep the cows looking a little bit loose and gestural. As I'm painting the details on the animals, you might notice that blue thing I've got on the right side of my canvas here. Well, this is called a mole fork, and what it is is a blue hook, essentially, that's at the end of a pole. And as I don't have the steadiest of hands, it's really good for fine details because I can rest my forearm or my hand on it in order to steady my hand to paint some details. So I've been using this quite a bit. And these mole forks are available at molefork.com. Very useful piece of kit for any art studio. So I paint the highlights on the legs of the cows and the faces as well. And then I make some adjustments to the shadows also. Again, using the same colors as before, it's a mix of ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna to desaturate and some titanium white as well. So I'm really getting into some detail here and this takes quite a bit of time. I really get in the zone here and just take my time with it. I've usually got a podcast on the go or YouTube or an audio book or something weird and wonderful to listen to. Now I painted this artwork over a few evening sessions and was taking my time with it as well, especially as I'm not particularly experienced at painting cows, but I was down to the small finer brushes and finer detail here and I was just building up the tones within it, adding those lightest values at the very end of the painting. There were some adjustments to the proportion and this is where my mole fork was handy as well to steady my arm. And there was also some readjustments that I needed to make around the cow's legs for example, so painting around those negative spaces. Once I'd pretty much finished adjusting the proportions of the cows and adding those final details, it was then time to just make sure that they were fitting in with the elements around it. So this is mainly the grass and also things like readjusting the shadows that were being cast by the cows because I made some adjustments to the cows form which means the shadows weren't sitting in the right places so I had to repaint those but not a problem at all. I also add a few extra details to the grass itself just to give it texture and interest to the scene overall. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I actually have a full length painting tutorial of this artwork on my Patreon channel, which you can access for just $5 a month or $51 a year for an annual subscription, which means you save 15%. You get instant access to all of my other painting tutorial videos as well. And in fact, many of these painting tutorial videos are available for individual sale on my website at samulet.com. And I've also got some video bundles there as well, such as painting landscapes and seascapes. So it's a great way to get some good instructions on painting landscapes and seascapes. I've also got a load of free painting resources on my website, including my website blog. And if you sign up to my email list, I'm giving away a free ebook on introduction to oil painting, where I go over the basics of oil painting, covering things like what paints I use and what colors are best to use, brushes, mediums, cleaning your brushes, and then other links and useful resources, and some color theory as well. 
all cool stuff. So it's all there at samula.com. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're new around here. It helps with the algorithm and all that good stuff. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Keep painting. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next video.